We are asking people all over Eastern North Carolina, our coastal region, to take this storm very seriously and to begin to implement their plans. A dire warning as Hurricane Irene continues to barrel toward the U.S. What coastal cities are shoring up for what could be an historic storm. Plus, are you ready for disaster on your job? From storms to quakes, how to prepare for the unexpected. A school bus blows up just seconds after students got off where this very close call happened. And the story sure to make you cry, especially if you have a best friend like Hawkeye. Your independent news network starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Bickle. Welcome to INN News. Our big story is that big storm in the Gulf that's taking aim on some major U.S. cities. We're talking about Hurricane Irene. Take a look at this NASA image, the storm filling your screen and bearing down on the Bahamas. And this is what's happening on the ground there. Take a look at the wind and all that rain hitting the island. Irene came through as a Category 3. It will likely be just as strong when it hits the U.S. Let's go right now to meteorologist Pat Walker. He's tracking Irene's path. Pat? Mike, Hurricane Irene is turning out to be everything advertised as to be. A major hurricane ravaging the Bahama Islands and now making its way toward the U.S. A broad storm, but of course the most intense is in the northern Bahamas now making its way out of there into the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Watching that closely, of course, Florida will be spared from the brunt of the storm, but high waves and surf, no doubt, from Jacksonville to Miami. Now we go up to North Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, up into North Carolina, the Outer Banks. Watching that as we go into Saturday, here's tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock off the coast of South Carolina. We'll be feeling that, no doubt. And then making its way from Wilmington through Cape Hatteras, Kill Devil Hills, up to Virginia Beach by midnight, Saturday night to Sunday, and then right up through New Jersey, heading toward New York City on Sunday, and eventually becoming a tropical storm and weakening as it makes its way through New England and eventually into Canada. That will be next week when it finally does come to an end, and hopefully uh, that will be soon, no doubt. Now here's what we're expecting for the winds on Irene. In the red, the hurricane force winds in the orange Winds of around at least 60 miles per hour approaching the hurricane force winds, and we'll be seeing those right through North Carolina up to Virginia Beach Saturday. And notice this, going right up into New York City on Sunday afternoon, and of course weakening as it moves through New England. Mike? Communities in the eye of Hurricane Irene aren't taking any chances. Evacuations are already underway in parts of coastal North Carolina, where today the governor declared a state of emergency, but many aren't heeding the warnings. I was dismayed when I saw that many of the ferries were nearly empty. People on Upper Cook Island need to take this seriously because it's hard to get off if the ferries are full. It's been 20 years since a hurricane hit Massachusetts. Hurricane Bob came ashore in 1991 as a Category 2 storm. This time it looks like Irene intends to hit shores there. Boat owners on Cape Cod spent the day securing or pulling their boats out of the water. Well, if hurricane fears aren't enough, a 4.5 aftershock hit the East Coast today. Now, there's no reported damage. Meanwhile, we're getting a closer look at the damage caused by Tuesday's 5.8 quake. It was centered in Virginia, but fell from northern New England all the way down to Georgia. It cracked the top of the Washington Monument in D.C. Engineers are examining the damage. They say so far it does not look too serious. Washington's National Cathedral is still closed. Staff at the historic building called the damage there substantial. It has cracks along its walls and broken pinnacles on its towers. No one was hurt here or anywhere else that quake was felt. Well, your household might be prepared for an emergency or natural disaster, but what if an emergency strikes while you're at work? Tamri Lane has more. Tuesday's East Coast earthquake hit in the middle of the workday, sending workers in Washington, D.C. and New York City rushing into the streets. It also served as a good reminder. Your home might be prepared for an emergency, but how about your office? Businesses are encouraged to periodically review emergency plans with employees, but there are some things you can do on your own, like keeping an emergency kit in your desk with supplies just like you'd keep at home. It could include bottled water and non-perishable snacks ready to grab on your way out the door, comfortable shoes in case you have to run or walk, and a flashlight. 
Also, think about your commute. If you take public transportation, have an alternate plan in case routes are delayed, disrupted, or canceled. Consider a portable battery-powered charger for your mobile phone in case power is out or you're not near an outlet for an extended period of time. I'm Tambry Lane reporting. Well, this is such a sad story. It clearly shows that man's best friend is just that. Hawkeye, the dog of slain U.S. Navy SEAL, SEAL John Tumelson, is seen here lying next to his coffin at his funeral in Rockford, Iowa on Friday. Hawkeye would not leave his side and even led the funeral procession. Here's a picture of the two during happier times. Tumelson and 21 other Navy SEALs were killed in a helicopter crash after being shot down in Afghanistan earlier this month. To the conflict in Libya now, where rebel fighters claim they have Muammar Gaddafi and his two sons surrounded. That still has to be confirmed. This is video, though, of Gaddafi's compound in Tripoli. You can see how it's covered in graffiti and ransacked, a place no longer fit for the longtime ruler. The rebel leadership is now offering a $1.4 million bounty for Gaddafi's capture, dead or alive. Time for Global News Now. Floodwaters are hindering the rescue of 26 workers trapped in a mine in China. The miners became trapped earlier this week after mistakenly drilling into a neighboring mine. Rescuers are devising a plan to remove the water from the mine before pulling the miners out. No one's been able to make contact with the miners, so it's not clear if any of them are alive or hurt. Check out this mysterious bubble cloud that appeared over Shanghai and Beijing on Saturday. A pilot first spotted the strange cloud, which grew in size. One expert from the Shanghai UFO Research Center said it could have been a fragment of a satellite that Russia recently launched. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has bragging rights over every other female in the world. Forbes says she is the most powerful woman for 2011. The 57-year-old leader also ranks sixth on Forbes' list of the world's most powerful people. Second on the women's list is U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The top ten include the CEO of PepsiCo, the COO of Facebook, and First Lady Michelle Obama. And that's your Global News Now. Our gas price watch continues and it appears they're holding steady. For a third day, the average price for regular unleaded is $3.58 per gallon. Well, fewer of you than last year are planning to travel over Labor Day weekend. AAA predicts 31.5 million Americans will travel at least 50 miles over that three-day weekend. Now, that's down more than 2% from last year. Fewer of you are also expected to fly. That's probably because airfares are up 13% from last year. Now, more who are traveling plan to drive than fly. Meanwhile, the best-selling car in America is getting a new look. Ryan Bass has that and more in tonight's Back to Business. Check it out. The Toyota Camry is redesigned for 2012. Now, there's no radical changes. It doesn't look too different on the outside, but there is more space inside, including a bigger trunk. The new look could help Toyota attract younger drivers. Right now, its average driver is 60 years old. Calling all Sprint Nextel carriers, it's planning to sell the latest version of the Apple iPhone in mid-October. Sprint had more than 52 million subscribers at the end of the second quarter. Analysts say the deal could help prop up the nation's third largest carrier. I had a large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means Whatever you call it, coffee prices appear to be on their way down. Kraft Foods is lowering prices on its Maxwell House and Uban brands by about 6%. Prices for coffee beans have soared in recent years, partly because of growing demand and harsh weather. But now, as the cost of coffee beans is dropping, coffee makers are passing the savings on to their customers. For Back to Business, I'm Ryan Bass. Thanks, Ryan. Well, it's a sighting that's giving people a jolt. And stuff, so it's not surprising that there would be something like that out, out there trying to get those. Still to come on INN, from the mountains to the Midwest, why these big cats are coming. And poof, a bus ablaze, seconds after students get off. Yeah, I just knew the bus was blowing up. I thought, like, it was going to, like, explode or something. 